Here we are again. This is uh, the weird secret rules the royal family has to follow. So I'm curious to see. I, I think I think a lot of the world is generally interested in the royal family and what they do, what they can do, what they can't do, and um, just you know from from Queen Elizabeth and uh, everyone else in the family. So I just want to see what rules do they have that are that we'd consider weird. I'm sure there's a lot of them. I, I mean, I think it was uh, Harry just recently said he wasn't allowed on, you know, the, the their famous buses there, the double-decker buses there. Um, and there's probably so many more, especially I just watched a video of the kind of secrets of uh, Buckingham Palace and what, what people generally don't know. And it's pretty much a small city there. You, you would never have to leave that place in your life if you did not want to, and you'd be completely fine. But I just want to see what, what rules the royal family has to follow and uh, strange ones, and I'm sure they are strange. So this is by the Infographic Show, so let's jump right in. When you were young, you might have dreamed of being royal, having servants to cater to your every whim while you kicked back on a golden throne, or maybe wearing a ball gown and tiara and dancing the night away at a fancy ball. Well, being royal is not all it's cracked up to be, especially when you're part of the British royal family. Aside from some official laws governing royal behavior, there's a lot of strict etiquette involved. If the queen yeah. commands, well, you obey. Here are some of the weirdest quirks, traditions, and secret rules of the British royal family. We begin with a legend regarding the British monarchy that's been honored for over 400 years. Since the era of Charles II in the 1600s, the Tower of London has always been home to at least six raven guardians. Apparently, the royal astronomer complained to King Charles that the Tower of London's avian visitors were pests. The king ordered that the birds be killed, only to be told by a superstitious courtier that if the ravens left the tower, the British monarchy would fall. The king was worried enough to stay the execution and issue a royal decree which is still honored today. A beef eater is thus to this day employed as a raven master to care for the birds. Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth. And uh, look, the, the monarch is still here, so I guess uh, I guess it's working. Fifth is Britain's Keep longest the ravens. ruling monarch with 76 years, having ascended the throne in 1953 at the age of 25. As such, wow. there's a planned protocol for her death. There will be 12 official days of mourning, and then the queen will lie in state with the public being allowed to pay respects before she's buried. However, there's an interesting rule that the queen has for her inevitable demise. She wants the public mood somber, going so far as to ban laughter to make that happen. She has strictly forbidden humorous shows being aired on public TV for the 12 official days between her death and her funeral. Whoa. Instead, the BBC and other public channels must show pre-recorded documentaries about the queen's life, which she has already picked out. That is Unlike us lame commoners, the Queen has two birthdays. Officially, wow. the British head of state and the Queen's birthday is generally celebrated on the second Saturday in June, though her actual birthday is on April 21st. Over 250 years ago in 1748, King George II started the double birthday tradition. He was born in November, which tends to have nasty weather. King George wanted to have a big public celebration and military parade, so he chose a summery June day as the official of monarch's <laughs> birthday. The Queen spends her actual Convenient. birthday with her family, although there are three special gun salutes at midday to mark the occasion. A 41-gun salute in Hyde Park, a 21-gun salute in Windsor Great Park, and a 62-gun salute at the Tower of London. For her official birthday in June, she continues the tradition of a big parade in London called Trooping the Color. There are several rules Queen Elizabeth doesn't have to follow. She doesn't need a passport since all UK passports yeah. are issued in her name. She doesn't. We watched a video of kind of what powers does the Queen actually have. And another one, could the Queen get, get away with murder pretty much uh, legally? But uh, those two videos are very interesting, and I have those up. But yeah, she doesn't need a passport, and a lot. Of, I mean, she's kind of like her own um, her own government. She could do do uh, whatever she wants, pretty much, and then she could uh, kind of say, "Yeah, it's, it's fine," and everyone kind of listens to her. So uh, have to have a driver's license either for the same. Pretty wild reason. how much but power these she perks actually are has. are reserved solely for her Majesty. The rest of the royal family has good. to get passports if they wish to travel and driver's licenses to drive. Aside from crown jewels and several palaces, Queen Elizabeth owns a bunch of sea creatures. A still valid statute from the reign of King Edward II in 1324 states that the crown has the right to claim ownership of dolphins, whales, and sturgeon when they wash ashore or are captured within three miles of UK shores. 
These sea creatures are recognized as fishes royal. Sturgeons are protected fish and quite royal. rare. The last time a fisherman caught one in 2004, they faxed Buckingham Palace for permission. It was granted, but the fish was later confiscated because they tried to sell it for a profit instead of keeping it for themselves. Speaking of seafood, num, num. the royal family has many rules surrounding food and the etiquette of dining. They don't eat shellfish, as it's a food group that tends to have a higher risk of food poisoning and allergic reactions. When you're frequently in the public eye, being struck with food poisoning or gastronomic distress could lead to embarrassing moments. For similar reasons, the royal family also avoids rare meat, tap water in foreign countries, heavily spiced foods, or anything they think might sit badly with them. Personally, the queen dislikes garlic safe. and thus it's not used in meals she hosts. When invited to stay with the foreign leader, Buckingham Palace sends the host staff a list of the royal likes and dislikes. In 2000, when Queen Elizabeth stayed with the Italian president, his staff received a six-page document. The list included no garlic, of course, but also nixed long pastas and messy tomato sauces. Being in Italy, I bet they were just uh, dumbfounded. <laughs> like, uh, I, mean, I mean, I know there's a lot more to make, but man, the sauces, pastas, garlic in Italy? That's funny. To us, this negates the fun of visiting Italy, but what do we know? Also on the banned list were carnations, other flowers of the color mauve, and having a duvet on the bed the queen like would sleep in. Aside from all the Italy. usual polite social dining manners you should display while eating a royal banquet, there's really one important rule. The moment the queen stops eating, you should stop eating too. Apparently this rule goes back to the reign of Queen Victoria, who was notorious. So if you went to a lot of parties here and you're hungry and you knew she was a, she had a small meal and she was going to end, end quickly, finish her meal quickly, I bet you're just like scarfing this down, like aren't you? <laughs> Don't you want to eat as much as you can before the uh, festivities continue if you see the queen almost done? Maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm, I'm weird. I don't know. Let me know. Let me know. Down. She allegedly could go through a seven-course meal in a half hour. While Queen Elizabeth Ooh. is a much more measured eater, footmen have removed plates from out from under the noses of guests because Her Majesty had finished and the meal was moving on to the next course. The Queen is known for her fondness of her corkies. While unfortunately mm -hmm. the royal corky line died out in 2018, the Queen still keeps a few other dogs. Apparently a rule is that the dogs cannot be scolded or disciplined by palace staff. They are allowed to roam freely throughout the palace as they please. Also, Her Majesty's dogs probably eat better than you. They're prepared individually designed gourmet meals. The palace kitchen receives a royal dog menu each month, created by the dog's caretaker, listing out the daily meals for each dog. These meals Imagine often being include the chicken, dog caretaker lamb, or rabbit. The royal, the royal chefs carefully palace. dice the meat into small chunks and make sure there's no bone. You wouldn't want to be the careless chef who causes one of Her Majesty's pets to choke. The pampered pooches are served in order of seniority on silver platters by footmen. The queen generally dresses monochromatic, but insists on wearing bright colors such as fuchsia. That way she's easier to see, even from within a crowd. A member of the staff gently wears the queen's new shoes around the palace, so they're broken in for her. Of course, members of the royal family must dress appropriately and modestly for every occasion. The public seems to be invested in royal protocol for clothing as much as the queen is. During her first post-honeymoon appearance at Trooping the Color in 2018, Duchess Meghan wore a dress which, heaven forbid, displayed her shoulders. It made some Twitter users very angry. The Queen also requires the wearing of pantyhose and hates wedge shoes. She dislikes- I don't think the, she's too popular, but uh, who knows? Who knows? Just seems like that. Any vibrant- And now she's, uh, Harry and Meghan are pretty Fairly close to where I live, I guess. I mean, just north of LA. Fingernail polish, considering it vulgar. Queen Elizabeth has been wearing the same inexpensive nail polish for 30 years, since 1989. A diaphanous light pink polish called ballet slippers by the brand Essie. Kate and Meghan occasionally rebel and wear bright polish and sometimes even wedges, but only to events the Queen is not attending. The Queen requires royal ladies to wear a head covering. Kate and Meghan sometimes skip this rule for less formal daytime events. For head coverings, hats or scarves are suitable until 6pm. After that, for evening events, tiaras are worn by married women. 
Unmarried young royal ladies do not wear anything on their heads for nighttime events as an indication that they're single and ready to mingle. The yeah, queen always carries like a purse which she uses to secretly gesture her indications to her staff. If she shifts her purse from her left arm to her right, it means she's ready to wrap up the conversation and would like a staff member to whisk her away. Also, Queen Elizabeth carries That's a fork fine. attached yeah, to her suction cup in her purse so she can hang her bag on the underside of dining tables. During a dinner, if the queen places her handbag on the table, she's telling the staff that she wants to leave in five minutes. When she places her purse on the floor, she's communicating that she's having a boring conversation and would like to be rescued by a lady in waiting. That's Duchess wild. Kate tends to carry clutches and also uses them to subtly signal her intentions. If she does not want to shake hands while she's on a visit, she'll hold her bag at the waist with both hands. Since the public is not allowed to touch a royal family member unless they make the first move, she's politely occupied. On a side note, the queen is also skilled in the art of throwing shade using brooches. During President Trump's July 2018 visit with the Queen, she wore brooches signifying her ties to the Obamas and Canada. The Queen has instituted a rule that all members of the royal family must pack a black outfit whenever they travel, in case there's a sudden death while they're away. Upon returning to England, they'll be photographed disembarking from the plane and must be dressed in the yeah, appropriate I guess, morning I guess that clothes. Makes sense. For the males in the royal family, an interesting custom prevails. The royal great-grandsons Prince George and Prince Louis only wear shorts. Dating back to the 16th century, from toddler age until age 8, boys in the royal and aristocracy classes have traditionally worn shorts. Trousers are for older boys and men. A pair of trousers on a young boy is considered middle class. The only time where Prince George has publicly worn trousers was when he participated in Harry and Meghan's 2018 wedding. It probably goes without saying, but of course wedding dresses require the Queen's approval. While royal brides have some freedom in style and shape, the Queen reportedly has the final say on the gown's design and aesthetic. Forget about the traditional custom of a wow. young man asking a father for his daughter's hand in marriage. Those in the royal family must ask the Queen for permission to propose. This was actually law. According to the Royal Marriages Act of 1772, royal descendants had to seek the monarch's consent before proposing. The Queen has approved all the unions of her children and her grandchildren, from Prince Andrew and Fergie to Harry and Meghan. More recently, the Royal Marriage Acts were repealed under the Secession to the Crown Act 2013. Only the first six people in line for the throne must ask the monarch's permission. Maybe they're bugging her too much, so uh, they, they made that a rule. Only the top, ne the next six people. Which has been strategic, about joining wealth and power rather than true love. Basically, the Royal Marriages Act gave the sovereign the right to veto formalizing a relationship that could erode the status of the royal house. The wow. secession to the Crown Act wow, wow, wow. in 2013 also gave the right to a royal to marry a Roman Catholic. Since the English Reformation Act, the Anglican and Catholic churches have been at odds. Per the 1701 Act of Settlement, royals were forbidden from marrying a Roman Catholic. Now, royals may marry a partner of any faith, assuming they receive permission if needed. The Queen loves to play charades and fancies herself a great actress. She enjoys doing impressions of the celebrities and world leaders that she's met. During her first Christmas with her in-laws in 2018, Prince Harry allegedly warned Meghan not to upstage the Queen during charades. While charades is considered great family fun, peculiarly, playing Monopoly is forbidden. Once Prince what? Andrew was presented with a game of Monopoly at an event, he apparently said, we're not allowed to play Monopoly at home. It gets Weird. It's too vicious. Uh, yeah, that that Monopoly definitely does get uh, pretty competitive. But it's, I've I've enjoyed it. I like Monopoly. I like this one. I like this travel Monopoly. Which brings up a lot of questions. One we're curious to know is how the Queen responds to Twister. If you were a monarch, which royal etiquette rule would you create? Tell us in the comments, and then watch when royal. Wow, that so that that was interesting. I mean, I learned pretty much every fact on here. I, I knew most of them would be, you know, strange and weird, like the title says. But uh, some of them, and, and they generally make sense, like bring black with you um, on on trips just in case when you come back, someone in the royal family does pass away, and you don't want to come back all you know in bright colors, and everyone's gonna be there to see that. So that makes sense. I think pretty much everything for the most part makes sense but uh, let me know what you think and if there's any other rules that are out there um, that you've heard or even seen from the royal family that would be interesting but uh, until next time thanks for watching and uh, have a good rest of your day